brought to you by Located in the northwestern most corner of Uganda, Yumba district is struggling with the influx of refugees from neighboring South Sudan. Uganda is hosting over one million refugees from the world's youngest nation that has remained unstable despite international interventions. Yumbe has seen its refugee population dramatically rise from 1,094 two years ago to 272,206 at the start of September. The 250 kilometer square district has five sub counties, four of which, including Kochi, Romogi, Odravu, and Ariwa, are home to Bidibidi and Ikafe refugee settlements. <laughs> the sudden population explosion is taking a toll on the district's natural resources. The local leaders reason that the influx is posing devastating impacts on the environment in terms of destruction of vegetation cover, excessive cultivation, overgrazing construction of houses in eco-sensitive areas and high demand for timber as well as other forest resources. The consumption demand for the refugees is extremely high and the finding shows that uh, within the next three years, if nothing is done, uh, the, 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 the scenario that is uh, uh, business as usual is left to continue. Of course, uh, there, will, there will be completely no firewood for the refugees. A recent household survey showed that the rate of fuel wood consumption for the total population in the settlements is about 952 tons per day, leading to fears that wood will soon be depleted in the district. There is high demand for construction poles. There is also high demand for firewood for cooking, high demand for water for domestic use and so on. It has also been observed that many refugees use wet or green wood, which increases the volume of fuel wood consumed. A higher proportion of households use the traditional three stones for cooking, with the burden of gathering the required fuel wood entirely resting on women and girls. These make on average four trips to forests and woodlands in search of fuel wood. Yumbe and other refugee hosting districts' environmental concerns are from overdue to lack of funds. The June Refugee Solidarity Summit in Kampala raised only 358.2 million US dollars in pledges towards support for refugees in Uganda. The money raised in pledges was surprisingly below the 2 billion US dollar threshold that the Uganda government had hoped to raise from the summit hosted by President Yoram Museveni and attended by the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Three months down the road, only a few pledges have been fulfilled and the money already put to use. The money that has come through has been really focused on being used for life-saving activities um, and some of it also for skilling. And I can give the example of Japan whose funds are already have been deployed. And UNICEF, World Food Program, UNHCR, UNDP have all been able to scale up their response, both from livelihoods and jobs to health for um, uh, young adolescents and mothers to helping the refugees who cross the border and come on in. Despite these funding constraints, efforts are on to reduce environmental degradation in the refugee hosting communities. The, the focus now that we have started, the focus on refugees, is to bring the attention of whoever is managing the refugee camps, particularly the Prime Minister's office and most specifically the UNHCR, uh, giving them attention that they must include the environment, uh, environment aspects in their management of, of the refugee camps. And mostly the most important thing is to really to, to reinstate the stock of trees three times than that is cut, that is cut by the refugees when they come in. The likelihood is that a combination of these interventions will be needed effective immediately to reduce the high wood fuel demand from refugees and to support a sustainable wood supply. There is also a need to introduce fuel efficient stoves and promoting of improved cooking practices at the household level. Mildred Tuhaise, Janina Nabukera, NBS, live at nine. Brought to you by